And finally, the digital divide has to do with the perspective of how sophisticated is ICT access and usage. So you have a kind of technology, what technology, you have somebody who access and uses it and the somebody has certain characteristics that are interesting but but how sophisticated is this use it is it just access or is that really do people really use it or is there even an impact derived from it and all of them do make a difference for example here you see different kinds of access you see here in the european union that actually most people access the internet uh, at home and only very few of them access the internet in public access centers such as cafes for example public internet cafes that provide internet access M majority of the usage is at home whereas in latin america here you have peru ecuador and mexico and el salvador and dominican republic you see that actually the majority of the people in these years here you access the internet through public ways of access for example in libraries or in special commercial internet cafes and that already doesn't make a difference you can say well do you have access or not and how much how, how big is your bandwidth but it does make a difference if you have the convenience at home or if you have to go somewhere else in order to access the internet now in usage we can also see a lot of difference here again you have the european union as you can see they communicate mostly on the internet same as everybody here in latin america but with regard to e-government e-banking and e-commerce as well uh, you see big differences with regard to latin american countries so some people argue that if you really want to understand the digital divide it doesn't have to do only if, if you have access because as much, as much access as you can have, you also need usage skills, for example. And if you want to get e-banking, e-commerce going, you need regulation in place. You need privacy protections. You need legal protections for that. And if you don't have that in place, no usage starts. So just access is not really enough to close the digital divide. Real usage is very important as well. And I could tell you many stories where I've seen actually really sad things in practice. For example, I've seen schools where computers were delivered and they were still in their boxes. And basically teachers and school administrators started to use them as tables because that's the best usage they had for them. They had no idea what to do with this potential access. And they thought, oh great, now we have a pretty good table here. So uh, only providing technologies and throwing technologies onto people often doesn't make a difference. You really have to know how to use it and really to integrate it. Some people even go further and they say usage is not enough. The digital divide is only closed if you can really see an impact. Because if you just use these technologies for fun or without any impact, then you know, me might, me might, might as well not even worry about that. And, and there are areas of real impacts. For example, here, imagine how you would go about finding a job or offering your skills if you wouldn't have access or and or usage skills. And that's very important, for example, for many workers from older generations, if they lose their job and they're not used to, you know, promoting themselves online, networking online, or using online platforms, which nowadays execute the bulk of, of labor intermediation in all kinds of countries of the world, it is very important that you are savvy in these kind of networks and then you can achieve a real impact or you are barred from having a real impact. And that's a serious issue. If you don't consider the real impact, and that's actually what all uh, matters at the end, you can sometimes even shoot yourself in the foot if you just pursue digitalization for the sake of digitalization and you don't really ask about, well, who is actually benefiting and impacting at the end? For example, let me tell you a story about a region in India uh, that was struggling with the problem of corruption in land records. So there are 20 million land records and under the manual system they were employing 9,000 village accountants. And it was very difficult for small farmers to get access to these accountants, but they needed these land records for a lot of things. For example, when they wanted to obtain a bank loan or they had to prove ownership. Now it took between three and four days to obtain such a land record through one of the 9,000 village accountants and 
bribes usually varied from $2 to $200, which are outrageous amounts of money if you're a poor farmer. And, you know, a lot of corruption going on. So the World Bank and others stepped in and said, you know, great, let's use digitalization. So they digitalized 20 million land records to benefit these 7 million poor farmers. And it was for a long time also seen as one of the best practices, you know, of e-governance, e-government, you bring in transparency, you fight corruptions, that's what digitalization is good for. Now, they did another study a little bit later, and they found that something quite different at the end happened. Once this information was all digitalized, very quickly, the largest players in the land market moved in because they saw everything went very transparent in front of them and they started to pick the cherries. They said, well, great, let's buy this, 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 and let's sell this, 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 and we create here. And they are the ones who benefited most from the digitalization. The 7 million farmers, they didn't have the skills and the capacities to process all this data as quickly. And so it actually, it didn't have the benefits that they wanted to have. So it is very important to ask about the final impact. You know, because sometimes you might think, well, digitalization is great, but some people have much better capacity to process information much quicker and access to information doesn't automatically do good. It's just access to information. So the measurement of impact is, uh, an interesting thing to look at when you study the effects or limitation of digitalization.